initiative which started in Trinidad and Tobago uh, following their general elections and then it moved to Jamaica following the elections there uh, in August and it's now in Belize. And it's basically an initiative which uh, is developed by a consortium of young people uh, aligned under nonpartisanship. And we want to engage our young people in understanding the uh, political landscape within our country. What we are planning to do is have segmented sessions with uh, political experts as well as politicians or political representatives. Uh, I think it's important for young people to begin to engage in uh, politics, big B politics, as well as small P politics. Because if you look at the statistics, we make up 60% or approximately 60% of our nation's population, as well as about 40.1% between the ages of 18 to 34 of our electors. And so it's important that our young people begin to understand the importance that we play in the direction of which our country is going. For our contribution to today's discussion, again, I, I thank Channel 5 for inviting me and, and also uh, I come with the Youth Votes Matter um, campaign as well. Um, and I specifically want to speak to young people right now. We have a civic duty and a civic responsibility to shape our nation from here on forth. We represent 43.7% of the voting population. It is your civic duty and responsibility to express your constitutional and democratic rights. Get up, get to the polls, go and vote. Because every single policy, every single legislation after November 11th will impact your lives. So get up and go and vote. All right, we are back at it here, and uh, this organization, Youth Votes Matter, they are celebrating a milestone, and uh, I have two guests with me this morning. I have Chanel Felix, who is the founder, and she's also the executive director. I also have with us this morning, uh, Kaleem Ali, who is the chief operating officer and director of Youth Votes Matter. Good morning and welcome to the Now Morning Show. Good morning, guys. Thank you again for having us. Thank you for being with us here. And uh, before anything else, I want to say congratulations on the milestone that you have achieved. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, exciting. It's exciting stuff. Of course, but we want to know all about it. So before anything else, I know that your anniversary is coming up very soon, but still there are some people that don't know about the organization Youth Votes Matter. So tell us what the organization is about and uh, the reason by, uh, for which you founded it. Okay, well, um, you, okay, go ahead, Kelly, man. I will just come in. So, <laughs> uh, so Youth Vote Matter was something that began um, to, to really fill the gap or to fill the need for proper election commentary that was nonpartisan. Um, and that, that was something that we noted that was missing within Trinidad and Tobago in time for our general election last year. So a group of young people came together and we established this organization with the hope of giving young people direct access to information, to politicians, to uh, palatable condensed versions of manifestos, um, to really try to get them to go out and exercise their franchise, noting that you know, the youth vote is one of the most uh, important votes for any aspiring politician, and that politics really is about securing the, the future and who better than the youth. Um, so we really created this organization with the hope of at least starting our discussion locally. And with one year, almost one year later, we've been able to grow that organization into a regional and now stepping into the international um, framework. Um, so yeah, that's that, just some insight on my end. Chanel will add <laughs> some more to it. Yes. yes. So at first we started off just, you know, as um, past UWE students, past guild members, we had, you know, members of the Trinidad and Tobago Youth Council and many other youth organizations. And we came together and we decided that we have to take charge of the narrative um, when it comes to what the young people want to see out of policy in Trinidad and Tobago. Because for a very long time, we have been engaged only in a tokenistic manner. But we, in this sense, we realized, okay, now the power is in our hands. So that actually created the drive that got us to this point that we are at today. So Kaleem, you said, you said it wonderfully, and there's not much to add to that again, to be honest. <laughs> 
Now, uh, what you mentioned earlier, Kaleem, is that um, it's an organization that is nonpartisan. And we have seen that the youths that have raised their voices as pertains to politics and policy in Trinidad and Tobago, they have very different ideas of what governance is about. They have very different um, ideas and thoughts on what leadership in a country should be like. You know, can you share what the vision of uh, Youth Votes Matter is as pertains to the youth perspective on voting and politics? Definitely. So our vision really um, ties in to really pushing forward narrative to young people, um, empowering young people to go out and exercise their franchise. But, do, but passing on that message in a way that isn't affiliated with any major political party or political entity. What we've noted um, within the youth space is that a lot of youth organizations that do exist often have you know, either back-end agreements with political parties or are directly affiliated. And that, that really affects the message that those parties um, and those organizations put forward to young people. So we are trying to be that independent voice that gives every young person the opportunity to hear the entire conversation, not just one segment of the conversation um, that, that is influenced by, you know, political agenda and whatnot. So in doing that, we're trying to really become the authority and the voice for young people in Trinidad and Tobago, and by extension, the wider Caribbean, to, to really make an informed political decision and not just go and vote for political party because of, you know, my family votes this way um, because of something like race or social class right. and other things that might tie into a political party approach. Now, Shana, let's switch the conversation a little bit because we are running out of time. <laughs> But uh, Youth Votes Matter recently placed top 20 in the world when it comes to an, uh, is it a, an award in Sweden? Yes, that's the Win-Win um, Gothenburg Sustainability Award, which is actually one of the most prestigious awards for sustainability globally. And because of our work um, in relation to good governance and anti-corruption and just educating young persons on, you know, governmental structures and politics, on their ability to have a say on policy development, we have placed the top 20 globally. So that, that, is, that is pretty good. And that is out of 220 individual organizations from 52 right. countries globally. So, wow. yeah. You know, so again, congratulations and kudos to you, because I believe it's just five of you that uh, comprise Youth Votes Matter, right? Yes, the you know, executive, and, and, yes. And, and the, the work that, that would have gone into that to achieve that level, you know, in the top 20 in the world right here, and you're not even a year old yet. You know, it really speaks to the uh, degree of work that you have done. Now, um, when it comes, you mentioned earlier about um, having anti-corruption policies. How do you think that message and, and, and that vision can trickle into our politics here in Trinidad and Tobago? As we have oftentimes in the news seen cases of alleged corruption and proven corruption. Wow, that's, a, that's such a, that's a, that's a, that's a huge question, yeah? I'll allow Colleen to also feed into this, but I think it all starts with allowing young persons to understand what the standard for good governance is at first. So once we have created a platform where we could educate them on what good governance looks like, then we could allow them to make the decisions for themselves in order to interpret that this is not what good governance is, and indeed this is corruption. And educating them that corruption actually impedes development and the things that we are advocating for in different spaces whether it be you know economic advancement technological advancement agriculture whatever that might be is impeded by that level of corruption that we are seeing currently in Trinidad and Tobago now even recently we see there was a release of the um, auditor general's report in the THA in Tobago for 2020 and that's a huge conversation to be had that we have been discussing you know having sessions on that allowing young persons to really understand the intricacies of these documents because the truth is Carrie young people they, I was speaking for myself a lot of them are not really interested in sitting down and going through these documents to have that type of understanding of the level of corruption and mismanagement that we are facing not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the region. But I being a Tobagonian, you know, that, that affects me directly, how that money is being spent. Because for a long time, we have been advocating for a certain level of advancement and development in Tobago. And we right. even have the, the budget that is coming up. So a huge aspect of 
us not getting what we are advocating for in Tobago has to do with mismanagement. But that's a conversation for another for day. Another day. I, 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 <laughs> um, I, I think as well to add to what Chanel would have said, it also isn't just about providing them with the information, but we also have to play a role in you know developing a system of accountability or you know a culture of accountability within Trinidad and Tobago. Too often we've seen politicians or persons who hold political office um, you know engage in questionable conduct and then there's no follow-up and there are no proper mechanisms in place um, to actually discuss the gravity of that conduct as Chanel would have mentioned and how that impacts on us as young people because ultimately the decisions that are taken today are going to affect our generation and generations right. that come after us more so than the present generation from which politicians right. um, come from. So we really do need to, to break that cycle and we need to develop a, a culture of accountability. And YVM tries to do that, you know, as Chanel said, by breaking down what may seemingly be complex documents into palatable, um, you know, infographics that young people might be more willing to receive, um, having informal conversations, but also having higher level conversations with persons who are not from the political parties and who are not from the political, um, you know, the political space, having civil society organizations, which really play a fundamental role of keeping um, a system of accountability in place. So we kind of interact with them as well to generate that kind of conversation and again, present the wider narrative, not the politically shaded narrative. I, I love the way you put that one. And <laughs> before we go in, we are almost out of time, but I have two questions before we go. So first off, how would Youth Votes Matter define good governance? And Chanel, afterward, I would ask you that, uh, how do more youth get involved with Youth Votes Matter? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, I think good governance needs to be a comparative exercise. We cannot sit and, you know, create a system of good governance without having a proper understanding of what good governance means in a global context. Too often within the, um, you know, I, I, I mean, there's always the argument for indigeneity and creating your own system, but at the same time, we need to take example from what other countries have done and, and be informed by that. But good governance also means not party, but people. Good governance is about putting people first, not putting the interests of politics first. And in putting people first, the, the, you know, the fundamental element of good governance that ideally is based on the social contract is allowing every citizen in Trinidad and Tobago, regardless of their race, their ethnicity, their religion, their sex, their gender, no, whatever the, the ground, the discriminatory ground might be, to contribute to that conversation. And, you know, for our perspective, it's really about good governance is a system that takes the voice of young people seriously. That's wonderful, wonderful. Chanel, before we go, uh, how can more youth get involved? How can they contact you to become a part of Youth Votes Matter? Um, thank you for that, um, Carrie. Well, we have just actually had a huge recruitment drive where we um, took on a huge number of new members to our executive. Mm -hmm. However, we are coming up in July, we're doing a general membership drive. So guys, just keep up to date with us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter at Youth Votes Matter. And you would, you would see all the information there that you need. We have a number of activities coming up. Um, as many of you may or may not know, last year in 2020, there was the release of the National Youth Policy for Trinidad and Tobago. And a number of youth still do not know what that entails or how that affects them. So these are some of the things that we're going to be doing in the future. We're going to be breaking down these um, these policies. We're going to, you know, we're, we're going to be right. doing a lot of fun activities as well. So guys, jump on board. It's not all it's not too strict it's not too serious sometimes we have fun so so join us <laughs> and that's a wonderful way to wrap this interview i want to thank you both so much for joining me this morning and having this conversation and i want to wish you congratulations one more time for the wonderful work that youth votes matter has been doing and continues to do have a great morning thank you very thank much you. and same to you all right